All right, guys. It is another dark, gloomy, depressing day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas, where we have finally made it, do you believe it, to Saturday, September 22nd, 2018, the first day of the fall of 2018. Goodbye, summer. So I'm doing... Well, here on my birthday, I'm doing what I do every other damn day of the year, and that's bringing you my Doomer Headline Roundup rants, where I just go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet is heading down the toilet here on the first day of the fall of 2018. And I just finished uh, the climate change meltdown portion of this rant, so we're going to go over to to part two where good god uh i there's about 20 20 stories of the various ways this this country and this planet are going uh straight down the tube so not i can't spend as much time on each one of these stories as i'd like to but we're going to start off with the absolute no shit sherlock headline of the day <clears throat> Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke to the oil and gas industry, quote, our government should work for you. No shit, Sherlock. The Interior Secretary's latest gaffe was a pledge of allegiance to fossil fuels. And so the implication being in this uh, headline is that Ryan Zinke somehow implying that the U.S. federal government does not work for the oil companies. Or maybe he's just confirming. Uh, anyway, no shit Sherlock. So what is this story? Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke let the mask slip. Mask my ass. They're, they're putting this shit right in our faces. Anyway, let his mask slip this week, turning the subtext of his term in office into the headlines as he spoke to a friendly audience. On Tuesday, Zinke gave the keynote address at the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association's uh, fall meeting. He told the conference over lunch, quote, our government should work for you. Yes, <clears throat> you, you can debate what Zinke meant by work for you, but many heard it as a pledge of allegiance to the oil industry. Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> It see members, industry members in the room were thrilled with the pledge, giving Zinke a standing ovation. However, environmental activists and some lawmakers were appalled by his statement. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so. If there's, if there's any doubt, it, it, not that there is any doubt uh, that the, the federal government, particularly the Donald Trump administration, works for the oil uh, companies. How about this little headline next to that one? <clears throat> Keystone XL pipeline route would not harm the environment. According to the U.S. State Department. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Wow. It is official, I guess. The U.S. State Department on Friday issued an environmental assessment of a revised route for the Keystone XL crude pipeline that concluded the pipeline would not harm water or wildlife. Clearing a hurdle for the project that has been pending for a decade. No shit, Sherlock. 
according to the 340-page review, even if, even if, meaning when, the pipeline spilled crude oil along its route through Nebraska, a top concern of environmentalists, there would likely be no impact to groundwater. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. And, uh, talking about the prompt cleanup response to any oil spills in the future. That was oh, God. Moving along, I got a lot to cover here, guys. Uh, okay. What's going on with salmon? Greed is killing Alaska's salmon habitat. No shit, Sherlock. But we can still save it. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes. Alaska's habitat regulations are sorely lacking and big and big oil has taken advantage of that. But the grassroots campaign Stand for Salmon is ready to face big oil down. Bullshit level, Defcon 5. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure following those last two headlines. Anyway, what's next? <clears throat> The world's biggest garbage patch is growing. How can we clean it up? Hmm. The ocean is full of trash. No shit, Sherlock. Whether it's on the coast, near the coast, in the open ocean, or on the sea floor, evidence of humanity's impact on the environment is widespread and abundant. No shit, Sherlock. Each year, 160 billion pounds of trash is dumped into the oceans. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, God. Y y you know, I think we get it. So, uh, I guess, uh, yes, and well, I'm glad to see uh, several articles, this being one of them, uh, laughing about that goddamn, uh, that, that, that little, you know, that little thing up there uh, scooping all the plastic out of the oceans, more and more people uh, you know, talking about the unadulterated horseshit, while, you know, who's to argue with that thing? But, uh, at the same time, maybe a better idea is never to let it get into the ocean in the first place, but then, of course, they don't mention anywhere, at least in that story, that 46% of the plastic in the oceans are abandoned fishing nets. So I don't know exactly how you're going to keep abandoned fishing nets uh, from being dumped in the oceans by uh, banning plastic straws as we uh, are going to get to in a minute. Even, even Bloomberg, uh, even Bloomberg Weighing in on this, no shit, Sherlock. The, pl the Pacific Garbage Patch gets attention, but scooping it up will not solve the problem. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. Thank you, Bloomberg Magazine, those eco-Nazis over at Blame Bloomberg, pointing out that scooping up the garbage out of the ocean will not solve the problem of garbage getting into the ocean. Environmental cleanup is great, but please, 
please stop polluting? Hmm. When considering what to do about plastic pollution, there are two kinds of people. There are the techno-optimists who assume humanity will eventually find a way to clean up all of our messes. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. And those less fun but more pragmatic environmentalists who say it's always easier and cheaper to avoid making the mess in the first place. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, and there is no mention of the eco-Nazi. Those uh, stick-in-the-mud eco-Nazis who are pointing out maybe we should reduce the population of the planet by 90% as the best way to reduce every environmental problem on the planet by 90%. Not mentioned in this Bloomberg story, but don't worry, we have Coca-Cola and Walmart to cut plastic pollution in our oceans. Yes, Coca-Cola, Walmart, and other big multinational corporations pledged on Thursday to help reduce plastic pollution in the world's oceans in support of a campaign by five of the G7 industrialized nations. Yes. And if Coca-Cola Corporation and Walmart are not able to solve the problem of ocean plastic, leave it to the great state of California, where California prohibits restaurants, asterisks, from automatically giving out plastic straws. Hmm. The details are always in the asterisk. This is this is how uh, that Save the Planet Governor Jerry Brown is going to save the oceans. California Governor Jerry Brown signed the first state law barring dine-in restaurants from providing plastic straws unless customers request them. There you go. Uh, and in case you're not aware of this, let the Governor Brown explain it to you. Plastic has helped advance innovation in our society, but our infatuation with single-use convenience has led to disastrous consequences. So, uh, I wonder how many hundreds of tons of these fishing nets are dumped off of uh, California every single day uh, that, that Governor Brown is apparently unaware of. And then we have a couple of asterisks. Of course, to make sure you understood that if customers request a straw, they will still get one. And number two, the fast food industry is exempt from the rule. Meaning, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, KFC uh, are not bound by the Save the Planet rule. And the mainstream media all over acting like this is doing something to save the planet. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit in my, uh, in my climate change meltdown roundup. I was just talking about how they're talking about building an undersea wall across Antarctica to stop 
uh, the Antarctic ice fields from uh, slipping into the ocean. But uh, we're going to go from the from Antarctica to the Sahara Desert, while where Donald Trump uh, has an idea to deal with the problem of sub-Saharan Africans getting their black asses to Honkyville. Problem with migrants? Build a wall through the Sahara. Trump tells Spain, there you go. Just build a wall. Donald Trump suggested that Spain could limit the flow of African migrants entering its country illegally by building a wall across the Sahara Desert. Hmm, yes. Uh, this, his idea mirrors his prominent campaign uh, promise to erect a, quote, big, beautiful wall along America's border with Mexico. Yes, this year Spain has overtaken Italy and Greece to become the number one point of entry for migrants coming to Europe by sea from Africa. Uh, so, uh, of course, Donald Trump, who uh, has pretty much completely uh, ended the tiny little bit of, of, of money that the U.S. used to send towards uh, African birth control uh, programs. Uh, I guess it's easier just to build a wall across the Sahara Desert than it is to keep uh, those maggots from breeding. So, what uh, I would like to do is, is so get the price of this wall and uh, divide it by the number of sub-Saharan Africans of breeding age and offer every one of those sub-Saharan Africans that much money to uh, get sterilized. And I think your money would be better spent, but you will never see that. Uh, brilliant suggestion in the mainstream media. All right, we do have some good news, some good news from the shithole country of South Africa, believe it or not, where we see South African rhino poaching drops by a quarter this year. And then, uh, you, of course, uh, they barely mention the number one reason that rhino poaching uh, it, it has dropped in South Africa is because all of the easy to reach, the low hanging fruit rhinos have already been poached. You know, like you're going to get a hell of a lot more low hanging apples stolen off your tree. Uh, by thieves than the ones up the tree. This is the reason, no shit Sherlock, that fewer rhinos were killed this year is because uh, there's a, uh, fewer rhinos left to kill and they're harder to find. No shit Sherlock. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, okay, since we're over there in Africa anyway, many versions of this uh, unadulterated horseshit story about the prospect of no people living in extreme poverty. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. For the first time in recorded history, Fewer than 1 in 10 people are now living in extreme poverty, according uh, to a New World Bank report. This, this progress to eradicate world poverty has been so steady 
that many experts now ask if a zero level of extreme poverty could soon be possible. But of course, there is one section of the country where the news is not so rosy. <clears throat> According to the same World Bank report, war on extreme poverty faces challenges in Africa. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. The share of the people living in extreme poverty around the globe has declined, but is falling a, a slower pace as the challenges in sub-Saharan Africa become more acute, the World Bank said on Wednesday. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, talking about as more of the world's poor have become concentrated in a region beset by conflict and the effects of climate change. Let's see if overpopulation is ever mentioned in the story of about extreme poverty in sub-Saharan Africa. Nope, you will not find the word overpopulation in a story about extreme poverty in Africa. But don't worry, we have Bill Gates on the case. Bill Gates is going to save Africa. The billionaire Bill Gates talking about a coming third wave of development in Africa. Yes. Take it away, Bill Gates. Quote, Africa has actually improved dramatically already. That was bullshit. Yes. That's always hard for people to see because Africa is the poorest continent and the pictures that you see when people are appealing to individuals to give money show only the poverty. Yes. There you go. And Guys, uh, uh, of course, what I, uh, you know, what all of these articles are are, are, are doing is the, is just the subcontext throughout all of these stories. Who can argue that getting people out of poverty is a good thing? I, I mean, obviously, it's a good thing for the people uh, living in poverty. And it's a goddamn good thing for the new world order, the global industrial economy, wanting to sell all of their planet-eating shit to all of these extra people with all of this extra cash lying around. But nowhere in any one of these stories are you going to find one mention about how bringing people out of poverty is going to be the death knell of every other single species of earthling humans share the planet with. What is good for humans and what is good for the global industrial economy is bad for every uh, other one of our fellow earthlings. This is the little inconvenient truth that uh, the World Bank is uh, failing to mention in their report. Okay. I just, uh, let's just come back to our own country. Okay. We have some good news coming out of the shithole state of Missouri. Missouri landfill emissions once, once posed health risks. And you know, the implication being that it no longer does. Okay. 
emissions near a troubled St. Louis County landfill once posed health concerns for workers and nearby residents, but those risks have largely disappeared thanks to cleanup efforts, according to a state report released on Friday. Valhalla 56, would you mind giving us a dose of reality on that story? Okay, from the shithole state of Missouri to the shithole state of Louisiana, where we, we're looking at a new anti-protest law being the latest weapon being rolled out in Louisiana against anybody going up against these planet eaters. Uh, on Thursday, the three protesters protesting some goddamn pipeline uh, were grabbed off their boats by private security guards while in a public waterway. They were then arrested and charged with felonies under Louisiana's new protest laws. Uh, they were the first in the state to be, rest, to be arrested on the new criminal charge of, quote, critical infrastructure trespass. The law which went into effect in August, redefines pipelines as critical infrastructure and as a result, trespassing along pipelines, a crime that previously warranted not much more than a misdemeanor citation, has now become a felony offense that carries up to five years imprisonment and fines of a thousand dollars. Uh, the three uh, arrestees were freed after posting $10,000 bond each. There you go. Uh, we can all see where this is headed. If it had been any other shithole country, uh, they would have gotten a bullet in their goddamn heads. Okay, let's go over there to the shithole country of Mexico for the No Shit Sherlock story. Mexican judge frees suspect of poaching in vaquita habitat. A judge in Mexico ordered the release Friday of a man accused of illegal fishing that endangers the world's smallest porpoise. Yes. Uh, the arrest had been depicted as an advance in efforts to save the critically endangered vaquita porpoise, of which fewer than 30 remain. Instead, it has proved an embarrassment. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's go to the shithole state of uh, of North Carolina. This is talking about the 5,500 hogs that have drowned in Florence and how many hundreds of these goddamn hot shit lagoons and whatnot. And looking at the bigger picture, U.S. loves pork, but not big pork. Uh, and I've already talked uh, about this, about big pork. Uh, good God, and, and of course, guys, I am a major pork eater. Since I stopped eating beef to save the planet, I eat a lot more pork. Okay, we've already touched on that, and I still got several more, and oh shit, now my battery's running out. Uh, Sandy, you'll have to call me back some other time, darling. I'm in the middle of a rant. Uh, let's go over there to the shithole country of India. 
India probes death of 12 endangered lions. Indian authorities on Friday ordered a probe into the deaths of a dozen endangered wild Asiatic lions, half of them cubs over the last 10 days, officials said. One lioness died after preying on a poisoned boar, uh, while eight other lions died of an infection in the lungs and liver. Jesus. Uh, we shall see. Uh, there you go. You shall find out as the last of the Asiatic lions from die out from lions, lions to whales, from India to China. Tidal wave of Chinese marine parks fuels murky whale trade. Good God. <clears throat> Talking about uh, all of the new, you know, the, these new basically sea worlds of China uh, proliferating across the country, driving demand for threatened marine species, according to scientists and activists. Uh, Orcas and beluga whales are among the marine animals caught up in a shadowy trade in which individual cetaceans, often caught illegally, sell for millions of dollars. Marine parks and aquariums are opening monthly in China with more than 36 new large-scale projects set to launch in the coming two years. Uh, there you go. This comes as many live animal shows in the U.S. and Europe are being scrapped due to widespread opposition. All right, just a few more because I got to get out of here. If you like Airstreams, you will love the new Eco capsule. The eco capsule are finally shipping out to customers this year. The eco capsule. Oh God. <coughs> well, I was talking about the scallop wars a couple of weeks ago and now scallop wars are barely over as new accusations from fishermen spark crab wars. Yes, uh, the scallop wars are barely over, but already new tensions have emerged in the English Channel in the form of crab wars. Cornish fishermen have accused French trawlers of deliberately sabotaging their crab pots costing them hundreds of thousands of pounds. Yes. Oh boy, the crab wars. Two more from the Clueless Moron Department. Maryland Rite Aid shooter came into work in a bad mood. Coworker says, yes, this is Snochia, S-N-O-C-H-I-A, Snochia, Snochia Mosley, 26, was a temporary worker uh, when she shot six co-workers, three of whom were killed before turning the gun on herself uh, and later died. A, uh, a co-worker described Snochia as, quote, a nice person, but said she came to work on Thursday in a, quote, bad mood. 
but we do have some good news. Anybody who ever says Hambone Little Tail does not have any good news. We're going to wind up uh, today's Doomsday Headline with some good news. Puppies spread antibiotic resistant bacteria in recent diarrhea outbreak. Puppy shit gave 118 people diarrhea in a recent outbreak caused by an antibiotic resistant bacteria. I damn nobody died. Oh well. But 26 people were hospitalized and if the pet industry does not change its puppy mill peddling ways, these outbreaks will continue. So wash your hands. Wash your hands so you won't get that antibiotic resistant bacteria from your puppy pooper. Anyway guys, I have got to wrap up my birthday edition, first day of fall 2018, Doomer Headline Roundup Ramp for September 22nd, and I really am heading to Home Depot now to buy a chain to uh, wrap around a 300 ton tree to keep it from falling on my house. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We all know why we are so fucked, and it ain't because of puppy poop. Bye, guys.